Today we're going to look at the steps of meiosis um, for the formation of our gametes, which are going to be our sperm and our egg cells. Now, meiosis is going to look very similar to mitosis in that we're going to see the same phases, PMAT, in the same order, and we're going to see some very similar things happening inside of these cells. But we should note that the two main differences is that with mitosis, there's only going to be one division. In meiosis, we can see there's going to be two divisions, which then is going to result in four daughter cells that are all going to be unique. With mitosis, one division is going to give us only two cells, and they're going to be identical. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at prophase one. A couple things that we already know are going to be happening is the nucleus is going to be breaking down. And we're going to see these centrioles are going to be located next to the nucleus, and they're going to be ready then to make the spindle fibers to separate our chromosomes. Now, something really cool happens in prophase one. We see that homologous chromosomes are going to pair up next to each other. And we know homologous chromosomes are going to be similar in size and shape, and we get one from mom and one from dad. I'm trying to use two different colors here. I'm not sure if you guys can see this on the video. Um, this one's going to be pink. This one's going to be green. So we have two big chromosomes lining up with one another. I'm going to go ahead and give a little uh, chromosome paired up with a little chromosome. I'm only going to put four in this cell. Now, if this was actually a human cell that we're going to be talking about, we would see 23 pairs of chromosomes, giving us a total of 46. Because we have two sets of chromosomes, we know that this cell is going to be diploid. At the end of meiosis, we're going to have four haploid cells. So we are going to see that in the first part of meiosis, meiosis one, we're going to start with diploid and we're going to end up with two haploid cells. So prophase one, nucleus breaks down, our homologous chromosomes are going to pair up with one another, and this is where crossing over can occur, so a little piece of one chromosome can be swapped with a little piece of the other, um, and this is going to give us our genetic diversity that we see. Now moving to metaphase one, we still see these centrioles are going to be on opposite sides of the cell, and they are going to then move these homologous chromosomes to the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and put a big green one up here a little green one down here, and we'll put its homologous pair next to each other. So meta, middle. They're going to be in the middle of the cell. Anaphase one, homologous chromosomes are going to be separated and pulled to opposite sides of the cell. We see they're going to be pulled to opposite sides by these centrioles, again, which have made these spindle fibers, um, and they're going to be attached to the centromere of these chromosomes. So here, we're splitting homologous chromosomes. Telophase one, we see in opposite sides of the cell, the nucleus is going to start to reform, and these chromosomes are going to relax and turn into some chromatin. So we'll go ahead and put some chromatin inside these cells. Following telophase one, cytokinesis, we know this process that's going to divide the cytoplasm and actually give us our two cells um, is going to take place. And these two new cells are going to have fully formed nucleus. And inside these nucleus, we have our chromatin. So we'll go ahead and put that in there. And at this point, following cytokinesis, these two new cells are now going to be haploid. They only have half of this genetic information that they started with. So looking at half, they either are going to get the left side or the right side of the cell. Now, we're not done just yet because we know that this chromosome, this sister chromatid, is identical to the other side. And the, with the chromosome being doubled, we have to go through a second division. So we see these two cells are going to jump into meiosis 2 down here, and we're going to see PMAT all over again, followed by cytokinesis, then to give us a total of our four cells. Now, whatever I do in my top cell, I'm going to do the same thing in my bottom. They're going to be identical. And again, we're going to see some very similar things happening in the second part, as we saw in the first part, along with mitosis. So prophase one, 
nucleus is going to break down and we see that these centrioles are going to form and be by the nucleus. Inside the nucleus, we know that our chromatin is going to coil back up into a chromosome, and that's going to become present. So I'm going to go ahead and put a big green one up here, little green one down here. So that means this one has a little pink and a big pink. With metaphase 2, these chromosomes are going to be pulled to the middle of the cell, meta middle, and they're going to be pulled there by these spindle fibers made from our centrioles. So I'm going to go ahead and put these near the middle. I have a big green, I have a little green, little pink, big pink in the middle of the cell. Now anaphase 2 is where these sister chromatids are going to be split. Remember, again, this half is identical to this half over here. And we need to pull this apart because we do not need double the information. So our centrioles with these spindle fibers, rip them apart and start pulling them to opposite sides of the cell. So we'll go ahead and put these up here. Big green, little green. Telophase 2 is going to look identical to telophase 1. Our nucleus is going to reform on opposite sides of the cell, and those chromatids are going to relax and turn into chromatin. So we're going to go ahead and put my chromatin in the cell. Then our process of cytokinesis, which divides the cytoplasm, giving us our four unique haploid cells. We see fully formed nuclei in these cells, and there's going to be chromatin inside of these cells. And that's going to be our process of making sperm or egg cells.